No. Okay, then uh, thanks for listening. And we will now get to the um, Google Docs, where you, some of you have already posted some general questions, as far as I'm aware. Shall we, shall we uh, continue right away with the Google Docs? I think it's, it's fine. We can also do a, po a short pause if you want to. No, I, I think it's fine. I mean, let's, let's, let's do like this, yeah. Okay. So the first question on the docs is uh, from Hadrian. What is the current status of Alpaca's interfaces to non-NVIDIA hardware? So um, my fellow mentors here will correct me if I'm wrong, but I, uh, we have full support for CUDA. We have full support for CPUs through uh, various OpenMP and threading building block black ends. We have uh, support for HIP and AMD GPUs. And we have uh, Experimental support for SQL, meaning uh, experimental support for Intel GPUs. Sergey, René, anything to add to that? I guess yeah, not. I think that was accurate. Uh, also, there is no uh, an answer being typed <laughs> to the Google Doc. Okay. Does that answer your question, Hadrian? So maybe. Uh, what I was wondering about is when you say experimental, it's like how experimental uh, can you do, can, do? Is it like in the starts working state, in the mostly working, but you may encounter a problem from time to time? Or can you a bit try to quantify this? I would probably call it partly working. So some features are not supported, like atomics. Uh, I've actually worked on this uh, for around half a year uh, in 2019, but I haven't continued on since. So it works with the Intel compiler. It doesn't work with any other compiler, which is mostly a compiler issue. And, uh, but Intel does actually a good job of implementing the SQL standard, so it uh, works reasonably well on Intel GPUs. I haven't tested it yet with Intel FPGAs. Uh, which was originally the main focus of this work. So we originally wanted to run on FPGAs, but currently this is not supported in any way. And uh, yeah, so partly working on Intel GPUs, that's the essence of this. Some features are missing and uh, some features are just implemented so differently in Apaka and SQL that uh, we need, still need to figure out how to merge them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Next question, also from Hadrian. What benefits does Alpaca currently offer and plan to offer in the future over direct use of the underlying APIs? So uh, the main benefit of Alpaca is the portability. You can use more or less the same code on NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, and CPUs without much porting effort. That's the main benefit when compared to CUDA. Does that answer your question, Hadrian? Yes. Okay. I was wondering if there were, you know, if you try to make some things easier than CUDA, or if you try to stay at the same abstraction level than CUDA, these kind of things. Uh, so if you just want to use CUDA and you have no intentions of porting whatsoever, then uh, Apaka probably doesn't offer that many benefits. Uh, another benefit of Apaka when compared to CUDA is the C++ style API. So a lot of things that you can do in Alpaca are actually optimized away by the compiler because it's happening on a compile time level or on a meter level. And CUDA itself is very similar to C. So you don't uh, have this much of optimization uh, effort by the compiler. We, I think we actually had some cases where the same program was a bit faster on Alpaca than on CUDA, but I think this is more an ex exotic approach. So uh, maybe my fellow mentors here can chime in if I'm telling something wrong. But uh, yeah, that's basically it. Thank you. Okay, how would you compare Alpaca to other C++ heterogeneous programming framework projects such as Cocos and Raja? I have to admit I'm not too familiar with these two frameworks. Maybe my uh, Sergey or Rene can add something to that. 
Uh, yeah, so if you're familiar with Cocos or Raja, then uh, Alpaca is rather close to both of them. Uh, so, so it comes from kind of the same place and tries to do more or less the same thing. Yeah, so it's also single source for heterogeneous uh, um, architectures and it's also C++ style API. Uh, right, so uh, if you compare more detail, like Alpaca is a little bit more relatively like lower level or like a little bit more detailed, uh, but at least that's our uh, opinion on that. I, I don't think that there's really like a big difference in the grand scale of, scale of things. Uh, what Cocos has over Alpaca, for example, is that Cocos also offers some like utility on top of that, like the, the parallel algorithms that we do not yet have in, in Alpaca out of the box. Uh, so for example, in the applications that use Alpaca, they, of course they could uh, create their own Let's say parallel for let's say go for particles like we do for Pico GPU and you know this like kind of domain science style things but but alpaca has like a bit less of that out of the box so that's maybe one like slight difference but, but generally once again it's all like, on the ideal level it should be all really close i'd say would it be correct to say that uh, somehow currently coco's focus is a bit more on the uh, high level utilities and alpaca a bit more on the abstraction layer because if I remember correctly, Cocos does not yet support AMD GPUs, for example. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that's accurate. Yeah, so, and, and I mean, of course, uh, we understand the value of this like parallel algorithms that come out of the box. So we also definitely plan to have them either in alpaca or in some other library on top of alpaca. So it's not, so, so we're not saying that it's not important to have, it's just, yeah, the current status. Thank you. Okay. Does Alpaca support using the various memory layers which are available on a GPU, e.g. global, shared, constant, etc. memory? So uh, global and shared, definitely. I'm not sure about constant memory, and I think we don't support texture memory. Am I right on that? That's correct, yes. And constant memory is uh, not supported. Okay. Uh, but but the compiler is also figuring out uh, very good uh, what is constant and can substitute uh, stuff and move directly into the constant memory. But uh, it depends on the compiler or on the code if the compiler understands it that it is constant used. Okay, does that answer your question, Stefan? Yes, thanks. I ju just a just maybe a follow-on question. Um, so. Is, is your general strategy to, uh, I mean, various GPU hardwares have similar concepts on the on the hardware level? Is your is your strategy to to um, to uh, make those uh, general concepts available across architectures, or do you would you allow also to go? I know I don't know. CUDA provides texture memory to if you're on a CUDA uh, GPU to, to to go into this very details of the, of the GPU on this one hardware. Uh, so you're asking if you can use CUDA functionality together with Alpaca? Yes. Yeah, well, you still... but also to to if you if you are able if you would be able to. To to uh, to access very specific parts of a of a GPU, which are only available on this very hardware. Uh, could I take this one? Uh, so, yeah, sure. Go ahead. So basically, uh, when a program in Alpaca, you express everything in your application in using Alpaca's uh, more abstractions for everything. Yeah. So Alpaca has a kind of memory abstraction, which is a hierarchy. Of course, when it was designed, it was based on the existing things like in CUDA um, and then for example for CPU some of the layers are redundant right because there is no explicit shared memory uh, like in OpenP like, like there is in CUDA and so the idea is that of course if the new if a new hardware appears that has a new layers that we cannot express in the existing model and then we would probably need to extend the model however of course the distinction of like when to go to the next level or when to extend the model is a bit arbitrary and it also depends, I guess, on like, that, does it have any reasonable implementation for other hardware? If you're talking about texture memory specifically, 
Of course, if you make an Alpaca application for CUDA, then and, and if you know the CUDA is your only platform, then of course you are free to use any CUDA features because you know that your code will go through NBCC anyways, right? So you don't need Alpaca abstraction for that. Uh, however, then if the code really relies on detection memory, specific operations, say interpolation that it offers, then it we find it like hard to make it portable to other models that do not have a hardware or like the you know building features like that, right? So that's then it probably is more on your side as an application developer to provide kind of general implementation for that in case you need it. Uh, right. So for texture memory specifically, that's why Alpaca doesn't have it embedded, and because it's just hard to see what is a reasonable like general implementation that would be. Because obviously, if you do it like manually on CPUs, then it probably will be not really good performance-wise, and then it would kill off all the possibility anyways. Uh, OK. OK, thank you. OK, next question. Talking to some GPU programmers, their view is that one can abstract on various GPU programming systems via C++ macros. What is your view viewpoint on this? So um, yeah, you could probably do that. But things will get very difficult once you want to run on both CPUs and GPUs. Because then the differences are, uh, won't be easily abstracted away by macros, which is also the purpose of Alpaca to enable the utilization of the full system, not just GPUs. Uh, yeah, it's true. And to, to add, there is also even, I think in Heap, there is even a script that does kind of that to force the uh, like Heapify scripts. Uh, and so, yeah, yeah, like if you stay on GPU uh, API level, as they are very similar to each other, so yeah, so it's totally possible. Then you're kind of building a mini alpaca, or like mini caucus for GPUs and manually with macros, uh, which can work and which does work for some projects. Uh, so nothing inherently wrong with that. Yeah, it's just naturally like a little limited. But I mean, if that's your use case, then I think nothing wrong with it. Okay, thanks. I, I guess it also depends on, on the on the on the level of detail you want to use the, the, the GPU. Yes, and then you also have to support it manually, right? So when there is like a new code version or a new key version, you may need to sometimes do some modifications, perhaps. Okay, thank you. Okay. Next question. Looking at the vector ad example, I see that code is generic over the index type. Why is this needed? Please do not bother discussing this now. It will be explained later. Uh, no, we can do this now, I think. Uh, so uh, it actually just depends on your work domain. So if it's enough to have a 32-bit index, you can just use 32-bit, and the rest of the code will still work. Or if you want to do, use, uh, if you are uh, content with a 16-bit index, you can just use a, a short, for example. So this is mostly for convenience. Uh, you could also just use size t all the time, which uh, I think we're also doing all the time in the examples. But uh, this is mostly just a programmer choice. Yeah, and so when when I mentioned earlier about talking about Cocker, that Alpaca is maybe a bit lower level and like more tiny details. So that's yeah, one of one of these things. Uh, that in Alpaca you could customize like almost literally anything. Um, so we also like to be fair, we also got feedback about that thing in particular that it may be yeah a bit over complicated so we are now also like somewhat looking into how to make a more simple api out of alpaca uh, so yeah so uh, feedback like that is gen is very welcome uh, and then of course after the workshop we will discuss and pro probably uh, do some work in that, in that direction Um, what kind of profiling and debugging tools do you recommend when using Alpaca? Context, I imagine it to be a bit difficult to trace down where bottlenecks are in the single source if you run this on various architectures and backends. Uh, so you can use just the native tools, like uh, use the CUDA profiler for debugging CUDA uh, code or uh, Alpaca kernels that run on CUDA GPUs. There are also some specialized profilers available that actually look at the whole system. I think uh, Vampir is one of them, which is also uh, not free of charge. 
So uh, some profilers you can uh, buy commercially uh, by looking at the whole system. I think they also work with Alpaca. Um, yeah, so basically use what you like, but maybe Rene and Sergey can also expand on that. Yeah, uh, to, 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 to get a general overview of your program, you can use some generic tools like Tau or uh, Scorpi. Uh, and Scorpi can be visualized with uh, Vampir, for example, what you need to pay for, or with uh, Cube3D. You can transform uh, Scorpi traces into Cube3D uh, profiles. But to get a deep insight into the kernel, for example, if you run it on GPU or something like that, then you need to go to the uh, native vendor tools because uh, these tools will give you really the insights uh, inside in the kernel, how many, many memory access you have, cache hits, and whatever metric you need for. And if you run on CPU, then it depends. Uh, if you run on Intel system, then maybe uh, use VTunes. But uh, then you need to really to go to the vendor tools. Yeah, so to adopt a little bit uh, also from more like a developer perspective. So, uh, so of course, like when they're talking about performance optimization, that's really hardware specific. While in Alpaca, the idea is that you write a kernel generically so that it's the same kernel body for all the, uh, all the backends. So how we try to approach that in our application, let's say Pico GPU, which is a large scale hard concept code that Ian mentioned. So how we try to approach that is we introduce some more uh, like computational parameters that are used for tuning. For example, a central piece of Pico GPU is a parallel loop over particles that's called inside many kernels, right? So we have a section for that. And the way how the loop is done, so whether it's, for example, tries to do a strided loop, like put a style, or whether it tries to do a vectorized loop like CPU, for CPUs. So how exactly the traversal is done depends on the parameters of this, of this like for each abstraction. And uh, we, we could just uh, try to tune it for different hardware, but just uh, by just playing with like this single parameter while our kernel bodies with domain science logic are the same, right? So we try to extract this kind of performance critical things and then just, uh, yeah, just play with it using the parameters. And then of course, like when we investigate how it looks, how it works actually for NVIDIA, we of course use NVPro for Insight and for Intel, we just yeah, use an amplifier. Yeah, yeah. Okay, did that answer the question, Stefan? Stefan? That's, that's another Stefan. But, uh... Ah, okay, sorry. No, no, don't worry. Uh, uh, yeah, PH, okay. Uh, the last question deals with Alpaca queues. Um, that will actually be covered in a later session. So uh, I'd rather answer it that uh, in, I think it's in three days, if that's okay for you. Perfectly fine, my mate. Okay, great.